Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Finnegan Clarkey, and this is the Marine Good Hall Week. My name is Karen Taylor Beck. The question that we decide to research is how the United States is going to adapt and change after China's national sword policy when it was already unprepared to deal with all of its waste. First of all, for decades, China has been dealing with a large percentage of world's waste. According to Shanley, Amy Alberts, Shanley Wang, and Jenna R. Jumbeck, in 2016 alone, about half of all plastic waste intended for recycling, 14.1 million metric tons, was exported by 123 country, countries, with China taking most of it, 7.35 million metric tons, from 43 different countries. Since it began reporting in 1992, China has imported 106 million metric tons of waste, making up 45.1% of all the Olympic imports. Collectively, China and Hong Kong have imported 72.4% of all plastic waste. However, well, according to Cheryl Katz of Yale University, China's national sword policy, enacted in January of 2018, banned the import of most plastics and other materials headed for that nation's recycling processes, which have handled only half of the world's recycled waste for the past quarter century. This was due to China's, China's population increasing to a point where they, where they can no longer deal with their own waste plus other countries' waste. This led countries, including the United States, to begin struggling to deal with all the waste, because now they can no longer export. According to data from the Environment Protection Agency, over 11 million tons of textiles ended up in landfills in 2017, even before the sword policy was implemented. This means that even when China was still accepting recycling, most of the United States textile waste was ending up in landfills or was incinerated, which causes carbon dioxide, methane, and other greenhouse gases to be admitted into the atmosphere. China accounted for 37% of all U.S. textile imports in 2017, according to data from the United States Trade Commission. Tennessee Technological University states, quote, in North America alone, every consumer throws out an average of 81 pounds of textiles each year, which totals more than 26 billion pounds of textiles in landfills. The British Broadcasting Corporation states that in 2020, only 13.6 of all clothes and shoes thrown away were recycled. While lying in landfills, textiles generate methane greenhouse gases and leach toxic dyes and chemicals into our groundwater and soil. The amount of textile waste ending up in landfills in the United States has doubled in the past 20 years, according to data from the United States Environmental Protection Agency, and we need to find a way to properly dispose of and recycle the waste since it cannot just be dumped in China anymore. Next slide, please. Our first solution is the circular economy. According to the Network for Business Sustainability, the circular economy keeps resources, such as products, material, and energy, in the economic system for as long as possible at the highest value possible. Products gain value as they are manufactured through the from the input of materials, labor, and energy. Essentially, a circular economy is when a resource is remanufactured, reused, or recycled. Basically, this economic model is everything in its power to keep a resource from being wasted. Next slide, please. In a normal economic model, a resource is manufactured, used, and then eventually wasted. A linear economy has been proven to be inefficient in protecting the environment and reusing materials. In comparison, the circular economy outshines this on every level. Quote, the ecological disadvantage of the linear economy is that the production of goods is at the expense of the productivity of our ecosystems. In the circular economy, by, re by reusing materials as much as possible, environmental impact will be kept to a minimum. Next slide, please. While a circular economy is clearly the better solution to a linear economy, it can be incredibly difficult to implement. According to Patricia Van Loon and Luck and Juan, uh, Luck and Juan Watson Hoven, quote, many challenges accrue in the transition process including finding the right market for the recirculated product slash service, setting up the reverse supply chain, selecting the right partners, and making sure the new, the new business model is sustainable in the short, medium, and long term. While the implementation process with this solution is incredibly difficult and complicated and requires lots of time and preparation, the payoff is worth it. According to the Ellen MacArthur Foundation, based on detailed product level modeling, the report estimates that the circular economy represents an annual material cost saving opportunity of USD $340 to $380 billion at the, at the EU level for a transition scenario of USD $526 billion, or a recurring 3 to 3.9% 3 of 2010 EU GDP. For an advanced scenario, all net materials used in the reverse cycle processes. Essentially, the potential, uh, sa potential savings and reduction of environmental impact after the implementation of the circular economy greatly outweigh the cost and time required to introduce successfully. Next slide, please. The second solution is acid hydrolysis. 
According to James G. Spite, doctor and environmental consultant, quote, acid hydrolysis is a hydrolysis process in which a protic acid is used to catalyze the cleavage of a chemical bond via a nucleophilic substitution reaction with the addition of elements of water. This process converts cellulose and starch into glucose, found in many textiles, into glucose. Moreover, this product, glucose, can then be used to power vehicles and transportation. According to Azam Juno and Four and others, this huge amount of fiber is further processed into apparel, home textiles, and industrial products, and after a certain amount of time delay, end up in waste streams. This amount of cellulose has the potential of production of approximately 20 billion liters of ethanol. Next slide, please. According to Miguel Sanchez, a chemical engineer for Luton University in Switzerland, two-step acid hydrolysis consists of a dissolution step in which waste textiles were dissolved into a concentrated sulfuric acid solution, followed by a glucose production step in which a dilute sulfuric acid solution was used to completely depolymerize the cotton to form glucose. The glucose, like the biomass of other plants, can then be used as fuel for transportation, according to Oregon State University. Excellent. Lastly, the implementation of acid hydrolysis. According to Hans E. Grithlin, a chemical engineer at the University of California, Berkeley, the cost of making glucose is in the range of 1.75 to 2.45 cents per pound, depending on the slowly concentration fed to the reactor for the acid hydrolysis. The range of the cost of glucose is very cheap and feasible in order to mass produce glucose from recycled textiles. However, there is dissent to implementing acid hydrolysis. Their International Food Research Journal states, a few drawbacks of imp implementing acid hydrolysis are relatively low yield, a high pro process te temperature, and the formation of undesirable byproducts fabricated from the production of the enzymes. Next slide, please. Between a circular economy and, a has and acid hydrolysis, we decided that a circular economy would be more helpful to implement as we have a bigger impact to remove all types of waste rather, rather than just textiles. First, according to Anders Wilhelm and Christian Stomper, the move towards a more circular economy will result in the creation of new jobs in many sectors of the economy. However, acid hydrolysis will only be able to take place when workers have been specifically trained to operate it. Second, acid hydrolysis is, is severely limit, limited in what it can turn into glucose, meaning only organic materials, while a circular economy deals with all types of waste in, as one, one industry's waste is another's raw products. In fact, circular economy is described by Fanny Wanfra and Geraldine Brennan as an emergent framing for waste and resource management that aims to offer an alternative to prevent linear take, make, disperse practices for promoting the notion of waste and resource cycling. Strategies such as, but not limited to, reuse, re recycling, and remanufacturing operationalize this concept. Third, a circular economy would save the United States hundreds of billions of, do of dollars, while acid hydrolysis would cost money. In fact, as said earlier, according to the Alan MacArthur Foundation, a circular economy would cause substantial net material cost savings, and the report estimates that a circular economy represents an annual material cost saving opportunity of 340 to 380 billion United States dollars. This all concludes that overall, due to its bigger impact, wideness of materials constantly being reused, in total net material cost savings, that implementing a circular economy would be, would be a better solution in continuing to solve the United States waste. Thank you for listening. Nice job. Thanks, guys. Okay, I've got a few questions for you. For the purposes of answering the question, I'm going to number you student one, two, three, four, in that order. And we'll start at the left. So for student one, uh, student one, how did the group decide to include student two's perspective into the overall conclusions of your presentation? Okay, student two, 
Uh, if you guys had a 15 member, right? So instead of just the four of you, if there were five, what additional lens or perspective do you think would have helped with the presentation that you guys eventually ended up doing? Thank you. Uh, if we had another team member, a useful perspective we could have had would be the futuristic lens. Through this lens, we could have examined how the textile waste industry would be doing in the next couple of decades, since the sword policy was quite recent. We could analyze trends to see how much textiles there would be with fast fashion, a booming new industry, uh, and to further accommodate our solutions. We could analyze, we could test if circular economy or acid hydrolysis could endure as a solution if the number of textiles greatly increased, but as the rate of cheap, environmentally friendly, harmful textiles is on a steady rise, as it is considered fashionable to wear new clothes every single day. Okay, one. Okay, student three. Uh, describe an argument from any one of your peers' individual reports that made you think differently about the solution you ended up picking, the circular economy. Uh -huh. uh, thank you. So Kermit in his IRR highlighted that we should advocate for a more successful and efficient way of recycling. Personally, I believe that is the best way to combat this issue is through policies and laws. However, Cameron's argument was very compelling to the fact that advocating for recycling is a very effective method to get a more efficient recycling system as it is public. Although the circular economy is an idea to implement, it is more than a policy than an idea to push. Moreover, advocating for a circular economy would be a great joint solution. Cameron's argument of public advocation made me think differently about our conclusion. It may be that in the implementation of circular economy through advocation will be the best possible way to solve this issue. Terrific. Okay. And then finally, student number four. Uh, reflecting on your colleagues' work, which one had the greatest impact on your overall understanding of the group problem, the whole idea of this China sort policy? Whose research do you think articulated that in the best way possible? Out of the four of us, I believe Finnegan's paper articulated the problem of China's national sort policy the best, as his paper introduced the circular economy and how, how well it will, um, how it can solve the problem, and it provided lots of context on the national sort policy and how it has affected the United States and the increasing number of waste that's piling up in the country. Okay, terrific. Thanks, guys. You're all done. <laughs>